It's Sunday night. You and your friends want to decide what movie to watch together. Well, that's easy, right? Just ask everyone for their first choice, and the movie with the most first choices wins. This voting system, called first past the post or FPTP, is used in the majority of democratic countries, including Canada, the U.S., and the U.K. I mean, it just seems so intuitive to vote for your favorite candidate and most votes wins, right? But it's not as simple as it seems. I like to say that first past the post is like one of those apples that are shiny and look great on the outside, but once you take a bite, it's just horrible. Blah. Let's follow a sample presidential election in a town of 60% squares and 40% triangles. Two candidates are running: Tracy Triangle and Stephen Square. Each citizen votes for the shape that resembles them the closest. Stephen Square has the most votes, so he is declared the winner. Seems pretty fair. Now, suppose Samuel Square joins the race. Some squares are attracted to his fancy hat and switch their votes for him. Now, Tracy Triangle has the most votes, despite representing a lower percentage of the population. This is the first major flaw of first past the post, called the spoiler effect, when multiple similar candidates steal votes from each other, leading to the majority of the population unhappy. <coughs> A real life example of this happened in 2016, when Trump, one anti-establishment nominee. Ran against 16 GOP establishment nominees who all stole votes from each other, letting Trump win the Republican primary easily. <coughs> also, note that out of the six most popular voting systems, first past the post is the only one that falls victim to the spoiler effect. <coughs> If you don't see how this is a problem, let's follow one voter during the 2019 election, Bob. Bob's heart lies with the Green Party, but he's faced with the reality that they have no chance of winning. No matter how much he likes the Green Party, he doesn't want to waste his one vote on a party that has no chance of winning. Instead, he looks at the two biggest parties. He doesn't really like either of them, but dislikes the conservatives more. So he votes for the liberals in the hope of preventing the conservatives from winning. This is called strategic voting, not voting for the party you honestly like the best. And in first past the post, strategic voting is a necessity. Since democracy is all about representing the wants of its citizens, how can we expect our leaders to represent our wants accurately when the system doesn't allow us to be honest? Today, all across the world, trust in governments is at an all-time low. A survey shows that one in four Americans think that democracy is bad or very bad. In 2016. 20% of the voters for Trump and Clinton didn't trust the candidate they voted for and voted for them anyway. Let's look at another voter. This is Bob's friend Joe, also a supporter of the Green Party. Joe doesn't really like either of the big candidates, and he knows that supporting the party he likes will not change anything. When you're in Joe's position, it's easy to feel like you cannot meaningfully contribute by voting, and many people in this position end up deciding not to vote at all. Voter turnouts everywhere have been going down, down, and down. There used to be a time when we had consistently 80% show up, but now it's just hovering around 50%. Bar, you might say, this is nonsense. Only because we have a two-party system now. If we had multiple big parties, problem solved. Actually, no. First past the post always inevitably leads to a two-party system. Even if you start off with, say, seven parties, after several elections, supporters of slightly smaller parties learn to vote against the big party they don't like, rather than for the party they like. Just like Bob backing up the liberals because he hates the conservatives more. This repeats election after election until only two parties hold most of the votes. Note that at the end of the day, the citizens' preferences didn't change from the beginning. Even though almost everyone votes for one of the two biggest parties, less than half of the citizens actually preferred them. This is the final and most important flaw of first past the post. It produces results that few citizens are happy with. Democracy was founded on the basis of representing the wants of the citizens, so therefore, first past the post is a failure to the fundamental purpose of democracy.
For example, despite holding a majority in parliament, three fifths of United States citizens are not okay with Trump being president. That's the majority of the population, and almost two thirds of Canadians are not okay with Trudeau being prime minister. Do our leaders even represent what citizens want at all? Let's take a step back. First past the post is based on voting for favorites, then maximizing the amount of voters who get their first choice. There's many alternate systems to first past the post, and I don't have time to explain them all here. But basically, they are based on not just voting for your first choice, but voting for every candidate you approve of, or ranking all the candidates in order of preference. Take a look at this graph. A mathematician ran computer simulations with two million trials, with the six most popular voting systems, and this graph shows how well each voting system maximizes group satisfaction. And guess which one came in dead last? First past the post. Aha.、Uh -huh. <coughs> When he was running for prime minister, Justin Trudeau said that he would change Canada's voting system from first past the post. Guess who didn't keep his campaign promise? 